Thanks to Established Titles for sponsoring this video. Go to EstablishedTitles.com slash AllThingsD&D to shop their Black Friday sale. Plus, get an additional 10% off on any purchase with code AllThingsD&D and help support the channel. Did you have the misfortune of being the progeny of a lowly peasant? Fret no longer, because now you can become a lord yourself by purchasing the Lordship or Lady title pack. Each title pack comes with one square foot of dedicated land on a private estate in Edelston, Scotland, and a printable certificate with a crest, making it the perfect gift for anyone anywhere. Wouldn't you like Lord or Lady printed on your credit card, plane ticket, or a dating profile? This isn't like buying an acre on the moon. This is a fun novelty product for those of us who get a kick out of officially being a Lord or Lady, but more importantly for us who want to preserve and protect woodland in Scotland. They also work with charity partners One Tree Planted and Trees for the Future, who plant trees all over the globe with proceeds from each purchase. The first 200 people purchasing a title pack using my link will effectively be next to my plot within a few minutes of walking distance. And now what you're here for. DM gives ADHD player a murder kelpie. So this could have been a horror story so easily, but DM is the best I've ever had. For background, I have a few disorders. ADD slash ADHD, CPTSD, depression, anxiety, and even a touch of the tism as they say. I've also got dyslexia and dysgraphia, but those don't really play in here as we use battle maps for big battles, so I don't have to try and hold spacing in my brain. Sorry if this is long, I just feel like I need to explain why Murder Kelpie came about. Party mentioned is me, Bard, and Monk. We do have an artificer and a rogue, but they don't come up. Now, as anyone who's got ADHD or is close to someone who does will tell you, we struggle hard with impulse control and seeing long-term consequences, especially on invisible things like credit cards or imaginary paladins going down the spooky tunnel. Interrupting is also an issue, but we had a meme channel, and I would just meme there to keep from speaking up during someone else's RP. Well, my paladin, Rayla, is an impulsive golden retriever. I once tried to pet a baby displacer beast, and the party would give her SH for it. Get on to her in RP. There was a lot of why can't you just stay put? Why couldn't you see the fallout of doing XYZ? I'd ask out of game and everyone would say that they weren't mad at Rayla. Other party members would act out and do stupid things like go on a drug trip during a rescue mission but never got called out. Rayla always got ragged on. I'd ask and DM and party kept saying they weren't mad, but the party would then be mad in game. DM said she liked how she could dangle shiny plot hooks in front of me, and I'd chase them with all the confidence that comes with being a tank. It took a long time for me to speak up about how I know it's in-game jesting, but it was actually starting to hurt my feelings, as that part of Rayla wasn't a part I made up for play. That was my own disorder unmasked. Things got a little better, but still there were harmless jabs. I was so afraid of being a problem player, or starting drama when everyone else was having fun, I didn't say anything. Should have, because it just started to build up. Now there was a massive snowstorm that hit right as I ran out of my meds. It lasted all the way into the weekend when the pharmacy wasn't even open. SH thing about psych meds is they can take forever to build up enough to be effective but they clear out faster than bad Taco Bell and black coffee after a cigarette break. By game day, I had been in full withdrawal for two days and wouldn't get my meds back till the next morning. DM asked if I was good to play, and I said yes as I thought I was. We open the Discord call and I say, as a heads up, I haven't been on meds for a few days. The party all knew I wasn't neurotypical. Well, Monk looked at me and said, so Rayla's just going to be more Rayla-y. He then mentioned how I was clearly doing it for attention, and every adult could see action in their consequence. Maybe it shouldn't have hit me as hard as it did, but it just felt like getting punched in the stomach. The game went on with them still making jabs. We were trying to hide who we were as two of our party members were wanted, so we came in as a circus. We then got arrested for not having the proper paperwork, even after claiming that the dragon we just fought had eaten it. At the jail, there were more jabs at how the circus was a bad idea. It had been mine slash Rayla's. I'd had it and needed out, so that was how the party learned I could misty step and left them in jail to then poof out my Azimar wings and fly off. Not my best moment, but I was so sick of it. DM wrapped up the game shortly after and then went one-on-one -on -one with me to see what was up. I cried hard. I cried as it all came out. All the hurt, all the fear of rejection if I made a fuss, all the ways the party ragging on Rayla sounded like my old teachers telling me things like, only you'd be too stupid to get this, cursive and to stop coming to tutorials for help so they can stop watching me pretend to try. Algebra too. Or you're an insult to the instrument. Flute trying to sight read. 
It came out how much effort I had been putting in to keep quiet and sit still, and mask everything I thought would be a nuisance, till D&D had become exhausting, and adding to my suicidal ideation as I felt like such a burden to my friends. DM told me to just take a break, that I wasn't a bad player, and I wasn't stupid, and if she ever ran into any of my old teachers she would beat them with a cleric's mace for what they said. DM also spent a lot of the night telling me that I was worth more here, and that my brain was lying to me. She had never wanted me gone, especially not dead. DM then went to town on the party making sure they knew what they did was crossing the line. She also poured over hours and hours of videos and articles on geeky accommodations without me even asking. Hell, I didn't even know there were accommodations for TTRPGs. She came back with a list and said that she was going to try these out, and all I had to do was tell her what worked and what didn't. The list was things like silent fidget toys, allowing me to be on my phone, physical inventory markers I could hold and move around, snacks, more frequent breaks, and so on. Also, she said I was getting a second guide along with Molly, my Azimar's angel. Enter the Marwen. My paladin goes to sleep in the woods and enters the Feywild in her sleep. Before her is a horse with a long mouth full of sharp teeth, iron hooves, and a mane and tail full of reeds. Marwen is here and he loves tricks, and likes the tricks my paladin pulls but he wants to help guide me, to be clever, and help me assess risk of tricks. Never to stop me, oh no, I can still do what I want, but if I accept his help he'll always be there as a guide. I do and I get an amulet of holly that will prickle and tingle when I'm about to get in over my head. DM then also made sure that before I ever came back to the group that they all gave me individual personal apologies. Most of the I'm not a screw up quit treating me like one was dealt with in those, so the party reunification and jailbreak went a lot smoother. As well as involved a speak with animals to send birds and horses to the city, a la Wizard of Oz flying monkeys. Paladin can't sneak, so I just needed a bigger distraction than clanky armor. The amulet has been invaluable. It kept us from taking on what we later found out was a full garrison, getting TPK'd many times, and against splitting the party to scout ahead. All it takes is the DM saying Rayla feels a prickle against her chest to give me a Marwin warning. The party has also stopped making the jabs at me. Most of them gave very heartfelt apologies, stating how they never wanted to hurt me, and swore up and down to be better so they wouldn't again. The others were more of an I'm sorry but, and how they couldn't wrap their head around what ADHD did, but they quit putting me down so I took it. DM also made me promise that I'd tell her if I was ever off meds, and we wouldn't play if I was, after seeing how much harder I took things unmedicated. Marwin was also a sudden CPTSD accommodation. Without getting into it, I had asked Bard to help with some trauma therapy homework out of game. Most of us live in the same city and Bard and I were IRL buds. I'd set a boundary about what we were doing, and Bard violated that boundary. That resulted in a whole mess of triggers being sprung up, a surge of night terrors, increase of panic attacks, and a whole mess. This had been explained to the Bard, and that they shouldn't have violated the boundary. Bard still hadn't apologized by the next game night. Turns out they stand by the idea they did nothing wrong, but I find that out later. In the game, Rayla, party tank, walks up to knock on a fortress door to ask what it is. If they're hostile, Rayla has the AC and the HP to stand her ground or run. Bard decides to follow in a sneaky fashion to see what's up. This wasn't a new behavior or at all out of the ordinary, but my brain took an imaginary tiefling bard waif with no attack spells following my imaginary tank of an Azimar paladin as full alarm not safe. If you've ever had a panic attack or even just been in a spot that your whole spine shivers with get out this isn't safe, but then you hear a noise and full body need to run, you know the feeling. I DM'd the DM over Discord saying I need it out. Poof, here's Marwin, pulling me, and party as the fortress had indeed been hostile and leaving them could have been a TPK out of that realm and into the Feywild. Session ended there. DM again does a one-on-one, -on -one, gets what's happening, asks if I just needed the moment to stop or if I needed to get away for longer. I say I might need to take a break just to gather myself and put my triggers and trauma back in their boxes that I'd worked so hard on in therapy. I told DM that I might be gone a while, as the trigger had been bad enough that multiple traumas had been sprung. DM just nodded, said she'll take care of it and I can come to the next session if I want, but first thing she's getting me out of there and on a break. The next game starts and the Marwin says he has a job for me, just me, and the rest of my party is free to leave the Feywild, then whisks my paladin away. I've stepped away from that party and don't know if I'll go back after hearing that Bard doesn't think they did anything wrong. You can't fix out of game problems in game. I love the story we had all been building but I don't know. DM says I'm always welcome back. Rogue and Artificer both say they want me back, but to take my time so that I don't get hurt in game again. They joke that Rayla just ran away from home and joined a Fey Circus. They're okay with it so long as I bring them back circus goodies. They should be playing again soon, and I was just thinking of how above and beyond that DM had gone for me. 
This is the first time anyone has ever considered giving accommodations, much less met me halfway, and made it so it wasn't a colossal effort to be acceptable. I might not go back to this game, but I would play with this DM again in a heartbeat. She's truly the best one I've ever had, and I will bake her as many game treats as she wants. If you're a DM and have an ADHD player, maybe a Marwin will help them? This might be the most accommodating DM that I've ever, ever heard of. I seriously have to applaud the DM, and I understand the challenges that the players may have faced when dealing with a player with special needs. This easily could have been a horror story, and I'm glad it wasn't. Tell us about playing with players that required a little extra help in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, All Things D&D. Stay tuned for more amazing Dungeons & Dragons content.